Hey guys, welcome back to the Fly Trap Garden. In today's video, we will be looking at the top 10 biggest carnivorous plants in the world. So let's start the video. First off, if you're new to this channel, this channel is dedicated to the care and cultivation of carnivorous plants. So if you think that that is something that will interest you, please consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss any of our weekly videos. Also, at the end of this video, we will be spraying our Drosophyllum seeds because we need to actually spray them every single day. So you guys will get a quick update on them and we will also talk a little bit more about our seed giveaway, so make sure that you stay until the end. So we will now look at the top 10 biggest carnivorous plants. Just to let you know, we are listing plants whose sizes we could actually find online. There may be other plants which I'm not aware of, which obviously I just couldn't find any information on. So just bear that in mind, but this list comprises the 10 biggest carnivorous plants which I obviously know about and I could find research on. First off at number 10, we have Venus Flytrap B52. This Venus Flytrap is the biggest Venus Flytrap that you could actually get. Many people know the Venus Flytrap as it is a plant that obviously catches insects within its mouth, just like this. And it obviously consumes and digests their prey so that they can make obviously new and bigger traps and eventually make some massive, massive traps. These guys are native to North and South Carolina and are often found in boglands, marshlands, wetlands and are super interesting plants to grow and look after. They measure in at 1.75 inches, which is also 4.5 centimeters. These guys really are some of the biggest Venus flat traps that you can ever find and they are also super, super strong growers. So if you can get your, your hands on one, make sure you do get them. At number nine, we have Drosra gigantea. Now, obviously the name speaks for itself. This is a giant Drosra, which is also known as a sundew. Now, the reason why this plant is at number nine and not number one is simply because although the plant's mass is extremely big, the actual traps themselves are pretty small which is why we have put them at number nine and obviously not number one many of the plants that we will be talking about are actually much bigger than the traps themselves but the whole video is simply talking about the traps only these guys are tuberous drosera native to australia the same country that i'm in right now and they grow in the winter months when it's nice and cold and they can grow their super big traps and climb on top of all the trees that are, are around them. These guys have been measured at one meter, which is 3.2 feet. Obviously, this is a really, really big carnivorous plant, one that makes a giant mass of sticky traps. But as I said, the traps themselves are actually quite small and nowhere near the actual size and mass of the plant. At number eight, we have Drosophyllum lusitanica. These are actually the plants which we got seeds of a couple days ago and these same plants that we will be watering at the end of this video. These guys are super beautiful plants. They're native to the Mediterranean areas of Portugal and Spain where they often get very, very dry conditions. And obviously this is what they prefer. Even though they make very, very sticky traps, it is often a wonder as to how they make such sticky and dewy traps even though they live in such very dry soils. These guys often come out to be 40 centimeters, which is 16 inches for you Americans. Obviously quite a big plant and also very, very beautiful, as you can often see them glowing in the sunlight in many pictures that you can find online. At number seven, we have Drosera Regi, the King Sanju. And this name obviously comes from the fact that he is the biggest Drosera, also known as a Sanju, as I said earlier, these guys make very, very sticky traps, which is different to Drosophyllum as they're in different genuses, but still very, very similar. These guys make their sticky traps where lots of insects obviously fly on and sit on the trap thinking that they're about to get a nice meal of some sugary substances. And while they do that, they actually digest themselves from the inside and the trap starts to close around them and eats their prey. 
The biggest trap that has ever been recorded for a Drosra Regi is 70 centimeters, which is 28 inches. Obviously 70 centimeters is nearly a meter. So this is obviously an insanely big plant, but obviously these sizes are only often found in the wild where these plants grow the absolute best and gets exactly every single thing that they need to grow and do so well. At number six, we start looking at the pitcher plants. This is Darlingtonia californica. These guys are native to Northern California and parts of Oregon where they grow in very cool waters with slow moving water underneath their roots. Obviously, these guys are also known as the cobra lily as their traps often resemble that of a cobra that is sitting up ready to strike at their prey. These guys oftentimes grow up to three feet in height in the mature plants, which is 91 centimeters for everyone else in the world. As I say, this is nearly a full meter of height, which is obviously an insanely big sized carnivorous plant. You know, you need to make sure that your children don't actually jump inside these plants. At number five, we have Heliamphora Godzilla. And obviously this name speaks for itself once again. These guys are native to the Tupui, Tupui, I can't say the name, the Tupui mountaintops of Venezuela and the surrounding areas. These guys grow in super cool, but very, very bright environments where they often get a lot and a lot of rain falling into their jug-like pitchers. Once again, these guys can be found to be growing at heights of three feet which is also 91 centimeters. The difference between these guys and the Darlingtonia that we listed at number six, however, is that these pitchers can actually hold a greater volume than the Darlingtonias, which obviously means that the pitcher itself is much bigger. At number four, we have Saracenia Leviathan, and this is an amazing Saracenia Murii variant, which is obviously one of the biggest Saracenias in the world. Of course, there are other Saracenias, such as Saracenia Megamouth, which are also really, really big. And there you know, could be a Saracenia out there that not many people actually know about that is bigger than Saracenia Leviathan. Anyway, these guys can often be seen reaching heights of 123 centimeters, which is 48 inches for you Americans. Of course, these guys are really, really tall. And as you can tell in this picture, a really, really big carnivorous plant that eats a lot of insects. Now let's look at the top three biggest carnivorous plants. All of these guys are actually pitcher plants, tropical pitcher plants, and in such they are all Nepenthes. Now these are probably the biggest genus of carnivorous plants out of all the other ones, and by biggest I mean they have the biggest pitchers. These guys obviously are Pretty pretty big, as you will see in the coming clips. At number three, we have Nepenthes lowii. This is a super interesting Nepenthes, which has a very open, flared pitcher. These pitchers can often be seen with shrews and rodents eating the exudate on the lid of the pitcher. And what they do is that they eat this exudate, which is kind of like a laxative, and then they poop inside of this pitcher, and this is how this carnivorous plant actually gets all of their nutrients. Nepenthes lowii can oftentimes be seen at a height of 10 centimeters, which is four inches in height, but the difference between these guys is that they make very, very wide pitches, as you can see in these pictures over here. Of course, all of these Nepenthes also have much bigger leaves. What we're talking about is only the trap, only the pitcher, but the leaves and the stem of the plant is often an insanely big size, reaching multiple meters in height, as Nepenthes are actually vining plants. They oftentimes scramble inside of trees and climb on the limbs and branches up there, and this is why they are some of the biggest carnivorous plants in the world. At number two, we have Nepenthes truncata. Now, this is one of the biggest Nepenthes pitches that you can find. It is oftentimes seen that these guys can catch small rodents, such as rats, mass and even bats. These guys are super super big and are very very beautiful plants to actually own and of course extremely expensive too. They make some of the biggest most robust and beautiful pitchers that you can find throughout all of the different Nepenthes. These guys are oftentimes seen at 35.3 centimeters in height which is 14 inches 
And now obviously that is very, very big. But you know what else makes it even scarier? Is that the pitches themselves have a volume of two liters, which is, I would say, 0.7 gallons for you Americans. Yes, these pitches are massive, massive pitches. And oftentimes people can actually put their hands inside of these plants. And at number one, we have Nepenthes raja. This is the biggest carnivorous plant in the world and is oftentimes seen eating mice and bats and rats because of their big size. Just like Nepenthes lowei, these pitchers release an exudate on their lids, the shrews and their rats eat this exudate and poop into the plant. But the difference between the two is that the Nepenthes doesn't have that bowl shape and oftentimes if one of these animals slips, they fall into the pitcher and they can't get out. Unlike the Nepenthes lowei, which has a very shallow, you know, basin kind of shape to them, where if an animal does slip, they can easily walk out of there. These pitchers are often recorded at 41 centimeters in length, which is 16 and a half inches. And now let's talk about volume again. These guys have a volume of three and a half liters, which is one gallon for you Americans. So obviously, as you can tell, this is a massive, massive carnivorous plant. So there we have it guys. That is our top 10 list of the world's biggest carnivorous plants. If you enjoyed all this information and these facts, please remember to leave a like as it really helps out the channel. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and click on the notification button so that YouTube actually tells you when we make one of our weekly videos. And in doing so, this means that you are also able to enter into our seed giveaway. We have two videos out which explain the process. You need to take a screenshot of me and my cat there and post us on Instagram using the hashtag TFG Seeds and tag us in that post. Of course, if you don't have Instagram, just comment down below saying, I don't have Instagram and tell me your favorite cannabis plant species. Now, let's go and water those Drosophyllum seeds so that we can have one of the biggest carnivorous plants in the world growing with us. So check it out guys, the rain has finally stopped, but it's still very, very overcast. And of course, polycarbonate panel has held up just fine. So I'm really surprised that it hasn't blown off by now, but let's start spraying our seeds over here. You know what guys, seeing as the rain has stopped for a little bit, I thought that I would get out this, um, I'd get the Drosera Regia, this, man, I don't know what this is. Sometimes in the water there's like this disgusting, like, slimy stuff. I don't know what it is, I think there's maybe like mosquito eggs or something. Yeah, I don't know what it is, it's really gross, but anyway, I just wiped it off. You guys can see that we have our Drosera Regia here. Two of them actually and obviously they have one of the biggest cannabis plants in the world but you can see one over here and this one over here now the very sad thing is that guys i think this one over here has gone ahead and killed itself what an idiot why would you starve yourself to death you know especially since we're giving it fertilizers and everything i don't know why i would do such a thing but uh you know we can't change it we tried our best but i'm gonna fertilize this guy and i'll fertilize that one again because its roots do look a little bit alive let me double check actually i mean the roots are still a little bit green so i'll still go ahead and fertilize it just in case there's some chance of it coming back but i really do doubt it but anyway just a quick update and you know fertilizing these guys with you guys so let me go get the fertilizer as you can see this is a really healthy one the new leaf has now nearly fully developed that that little bud that i was talking about before so this guy's nice and happy give it its food And now we will try our very best to get this guy right in the roots so that if there is any life in there, the life will come back. Okay, well, there we go, guys. All we can do is hope and pray that he comes back, even though I really doubt it, but not much else we can do. These guys are very, very temperamental, which is very often times the reason why Everyone suggests that you fertilize them while they're young. So there we go guys, a super easy video, one with a lot of information that I hope you guys enjoy. And yeah, obviously feeding up our Drosera regia, one of the biggest plants in the world that is so big, it literally starves itself to death when it's still a baby. 
but obviously we have at least one of them still growing and we will make our damn best sure that we keep that one alive. So yeah, I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video.